Welcome to our webinar to learn about all the applications that are facilitated by our super folder and split GFP technologies. My name is Janet Peña and I am your presenter for today and I would like you to meet the team. Just a brief introduction for you. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Sandia Biotech and the team that you see on this screen is the driving force for Sandia at this time. We are based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we have core competencies that give us the tools to develop, produce, validate, and control the quality of the recombinant proteins that we produce and make available to the scientific community. We focus on offering unique research toolkits that simplify assays in a variety of fluorescence applications. And we have developed a rapid production pipeline for our products. We have developed the tools that we are making available to you today based on licensed technologies that are aligned with our mission. To deliver powerful fluorescence technology that would drive or facilitate research and diagnostics. Today, I will share with you how Superfolder GFP and Split GFP have been used extensively in the research community with publications that have used our technologies. And I will briefly introduce also our novel Superfolder Fluorescent Pro. We hold the license for Superfolder GFP for research use only. And the technology was developed at Los Alamos National Labs, which is abbreviated as SLANO. One of the difficulties when working with fluorescent proteins is the ability to express them in bacteria. These proteins are prone to aggregation and they would commonly be packaged in the bacteria clearing, <laughs> bacteria clearing system known as inclusion bodies. And so the insoluble proteins are stored in inclusion bodies as misfolded and non-functional proteins. So researchers at LANL decided to generate a robustly folded version of the green fluorescent protein. And this protein, Superfolder, benefits from improved folding kinetics, greater resistance to chemical denaturants, and has a broader temperature tolerance. A research paper from 2008 utilized Superfolder's increased temperature tolerance to monitor protein localization of the extremophile bacteria, Thermus thermophilus, with Superfolder still providing data at 70 degrees Celsius. But more recently, and by using Sandia Biotech's Superfolder plasmids, Researchers at the University of Cambridge and the Max Planck Institute for Terrestrial Microbiology used Superfolder's increased temperature tolerance to answer an important evolutionary question. With a Superfolder GFP fusion, they were able to define that the archaean Sulfolivus acidocaldarius, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but it has preserved a ubiquitin-like protosomal degradation pathway that is also found in eukaryotes. They fuse the suspected ubiquitin-related modifier to superfolder GFP and tracked how the fluorescence intensity would diminish as the fusion protein was degraded by the protosomal pathway. Even as recently as of November of 2022, there is an observation done by researchers that focus on studying archaea. In addition to high resolution thermal microscopy, there is a need for diverse thermostable fluorescent probes allowing the localization of proteins in living cells, as only a few are currently available. They cite Superfolder as one of the few probes that can be used for fluorescent monitoring in archaea. Superfolder technology was later adapted in the GFP bipartite system, split GFP. This technology allows for qualitative and quantitative analysis of recombinant proteins. It is a two-part system that has unlocked the imagination of researchers worldwide and has been used in high throughput screening, analysis of protein-protein interactions, and applied in biosensor applications. So if you take a look at the image in front of you, when you remove a small section of the superfolder C-terminus sequence, which is known as this S11 here, um, it's a 15 amino acid universal tag. 
Um, this results in a non-folded, non-fluorescent, incomplete protein that we term S1 through 10. And when this unfolded universal reporter uh, comes in contact with the section that was removed, which is the S11, refolding occurs, turning on the light per se, as you see here, and the resulted, resulting bright fluorescent protein. And this allows for the assessment of recombinant proteins because there is a linker that can be incorporated here with your protein of interest. And this is my best attempt to draw your protein of interest, my dear viewer. So depending on the setup, you can even look at protein-protein interactions in vivo when it comes to using this system. So turn on the light with our fold and glow, uh, which helps researchers track and quantify the recombinant protein. Additionally, because split GFP derives from superfolder, a protein that folds five times faster than other fluorescent proteins, this unique property assists in folding of the protein of interest even proteins that have low solubility have a higher likelihood of success when they carry the 15 amino acid universal tag and are expressed with this system. We have the split GFP system or the split fluorescent protein system in cyan, green, and yellow to fit into your assays. Another split fluorescent protein technology that Sandia Biotech provides is cut and glow. These kits allow the detection of protease activity. We provide a plasmid that expresses the universal tag, which is also known as S11, as I mentioned, in a constrained format. If there are proteases present, they will cleave the protein construct, liberating the S11 tag and permitting the interaction with the universal GFP reagent. In short, the greater the protease activity, the greater the fluorescent signal from GFP. In this research article, they introduced methodology for increased accuracy in imaging individual molecules in living cells. Single molecule microscopy with the complemented split FP fusion proteins allowed for advanced bioimaging modalities. They also take it a step further by utilizing FRET, which is foster resonance energy transfer, to increase their analytical range of probes to the micromolar level. And I do want to point out that our split GFP has been optimized for expression in mammalian cells as well, which are the type of cells that were used in this study. I'm excited to go over this next two articles. They are great examples of how adaptive our split GFP technology can be. So the split GFP system helped elucidate the dynamics of viral infections in cells through the bipartite property. And in this PLOS One article, the researchers tagged the influenza A virus polymerase with S11, the 15 amino acid tag. And the mammalian cells used in the study were transduced to stably express the unfolded non-fluorescent reagent. Once the universal reagent encountered the tag, researchers were able to localize the viral protein in real time. In the research paper on enterovirus replication, they used split GFP to better understand how the positive strand RNA viruses generate their replication organelles. They emphasized that the GFP bipartite system helped overcome limitations in the imaging of this process and that these techniques can give rise to studies on the origin, location, and function of these replication organelles in host cells. I enjoyed this article as well because of the creativity um, in, in the use of our technology. The researchers used the split GFP system to understand the trafficking signals of the apicoplast in apicomplex and parasites. Uh, the bipartite nature of the split GFP allowed identification not only of the location of the proteins of interest, but also of the orientation that the protein was in in the apicoplast membrane. 
This also highlights the robustness of split GFP because of its usage in cells of AP complexins. All of the previous examples are from researchers that used our products to answer their research question. For the following example, I just want to mention the possibilities that can arise from this split GFP system. The authors of this article mentioned how there's a variety of limitations when it comes to having a high throughput uh, analysis or high throughput screening uh, system when it comes to protein production and the production of protein variants. And they mentioned that the split GFP technology offers an affordable and technically simpler manner to overcoming the constraints that these systems have in place right now, and that it makes protein library screening more efficient. Ultimately, this demonstrates more of what could be done with Sandia Biotech's reagents. I know I just threw a lot of information at you, so I just want to have a quick recap when it comes to some of the uh, benefits from Superfolder versus some of the benefits from Split GFP. But when it comes to Superfolder, it benefits from improved folding kinetics. It is it is resistant or has a higher resistance to chemical denaturants, and it is used in assays where there is a need for high thermal stability. And when it comes to the split GFP system, because it's derived from superfolder, it can benefit from some of those properties. Uh, it is a bipartite system, so it's the turn on the light. Uh, system that I mentioned. It can serve as a folding reporter, but also potentially increase solubility of a protein that has low solubility when expressed. Uh, it can also help in the assessment of the expression and the quantification of recombinant proteins and track the trafficking of proteins, as well as potentially be used in high throughput screening. And I believe there's already some uh, papers that have done some of the initial work when it comes to high throughput screening with split GFP. They're both incredibly bright, robust systems or protein, and they can help in looking at protein localization, protein interactions, and they can be used in several fluorescence applications. We do have several domestic uh, customers, and uh, this is just a slide showing a few of them that are related to the publications that I mentioned before. If you are interested in our products, all of them can be purchased directly from our website, but Sigma is also our distributor, so you can find our products there as well. This will be a short introduction to our Superfolder Fluorobody technology because we will make available a Fluorobody webinar next month. Now, if you look at this screen, the structure of a Fluorobody consists of a fluorescent protein that is molecularly linked to a heavy and light chain, thus resulting in an innately fluorescent monoclonal antibody that eliminates the need for conjugate dyes or secondary antibodies. Merging fluorobody technology with superfolder results in an incredibly bright probe with increased potential for absolute quantitation of a target because of the unique one-to-one -one ratio of the binding site to the fluorescent signal when it comes to the structure of a fluorobody. Fluorobodies with superfolder have already been tested and used in fluorescent ELISA, flow cytometry, and fluorescence imaging. Sandia Biotech holds an international patent of the fluorobody technology, as well as a patent on our efficient production methodology. Join us next month to learn more about fluorobodies and the possibilities of what can be done with these novel fluorescent probes. Thank you again for joining us, and I leave you with a picture of the Sandia Mountains, which are located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. In case you missed it in the webinar, that's where Sandia Biotech is also located at. And we invite you to visit our website, contact us through telephone, email, we will answer. This will be posted on LinkedIn and YouTube, and if you have any questions, something wasn't clear, just go ahead and comment and we will answer. Thanks again.